Good afternoon. Thank you for coming today. Welcome to our March 21st, 2022 Council meeting. We'll start the meeting with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. First item on the agenda is our county attorney, Matt Shipman. Hi, good afternoon. Um, the, the main things that I really have to report on are uh, later on the agenda uh, related to the, the bond for the jail. Um, I did, there was a question posed by bond council about whether or not we needed to get two appraisals done. And uh, we were able to find those ahead of time and she's researching it right now. And she said she would text me as soon as I find out, but we may need to get, if they're not close enough in time, the ones that we have are from February and January of 2020. Um, Lisa's gonna text me and let me know, but we may need to do, get a couple of appraisals for that property as well, which should be pretty easy to update what we already have. Nothing's changed other than the market, so. Okay, anything else? No, other than what you guys actually, just for clarification, what you actually need to do today is just to adopt the resolution. You need to sign the lease agreement or the addendums. The resolution just introduces the lease agreement and, uh, and then it will be, there will be an actually advertised public hearing on the April 18th commissioners meeting for that to be formally approved. This is just kind of to introduce the lease agreement or between the county and the building corporation, you know, basically the same way we built this building, same concept. So, I'm with Beavers here from the building corporation if there's questions related to that. Okay, uh, moving on, we'll, we'll go to uh, Leslie Blakely from the Council on Aging. I, I did review Leslie's thing too. I forgot to mention that, but I did review that. She said it's me a week or so ago. It seemed appropriate. So we're here today just submitting the final disbursement, the voucher for the final disbursement for the CARES Act funding that's available to us. Uh, remaining balance that would be distributed from this final quarter of last year would be $144,071. Um, we actually then supplemented that with a local share contributing $22,126 to fund the difference in, in what they are available to pay. Um, the important part for us is that we utilized all of the funding that was available to us through the CARES Act. Not all transit organizations in the state were able to take full advantage of the CARES Act funding that was available to them. Uh, and that was something that we felt very strongly about and wanted to ensure that we were utilizing all of the funds that were made available to us, knowing that we would have to kick in a little bit um, ourselves to cover the difference. Uh, excuse me, the difference. So, um, so I have that for signature today. I also provided uh, just some statistical information about Whitley County Transit specifically, because this this voucher, of course, is related to Whitley County Transit, uh, and just wanted to give you some information on how we've done for the year, how we did in 2021. Sure. Great. Questions? What um, action do you need from us today? Just need a signature on this grant application. I think we may need a, a, a motion probably. I'll make a motion that we approve um, the CARES Act uh, uh, voucher for Council on Aging, Whitley County Transit. Second. Okay, I have a motion and a second. Anything further? I'll call for the vote. All those in favor signify, signify by raising your right hand. Those the same and that was passed unanimously. Do you have a copy for my sign? Um, I suppose um, here. It's the box on the lower right hand that you'll complete. Yeah, yeah the signature there. Email me that too. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 
All right, next up, we have Amy Motter, Probation Department Vehicle Request and Support Animal Fund Ordinance. Um, a few years ago, the uh, we received a car from the Sheriff's Department. It was one of the old chargers. It was a 2009. It has seen its better days. Um, so I'm here to ask if we can get one of the new Sheriff's vehicles that they've just rotated out of service another old car if we could take that Jenny come um so that's what I'm here to ask for and then if we can get that vehicle then we'll just give the 2009 back to the county to send to its final resting place um does the sheriff's department do you, do you guys have to I mean it's already it's already so gone. you're okay it's with it Okay. It's just, yeah. She's just going through the process of actually transferring it so she can put it over to her department, put the municipal plate on it, and pull the sheriff's plate. Just, yeah, we're ready to go with that. Yeah. Okay. 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 Yeah. Okay.
So last meeting we approved the five and two. Um, and at that time we had decided that we would revisit, we would allow for the four two um, to be revised to drop one day off. Um, looks like their proposal was to remove President's Day, but still observe July 3rd, right? Or yeah, it, um, it should be on there. They never had the two days for July. They just had okay. the one. So they removed President's Day. Okay, so they, they, they just removed President's Day from the schedule. Has everybody had a chance to review that? But I'm confused. If they weren't observing the same days that we were, why did they have to drop one because of them? they chose to remove one from the five and two, so we have to remove one from the four and two as well. So it keeps the number of holidays even between all employees. Okay. I'd make a motion that we approve the four two holiday schedule for 2023. Do you have a motion? Um, I can't second that. Um, I didn't vote in favor for the schedule change at the last meeting. Um, so for the four two to remove one, I can't vote. I can't be in favor of this one either. Okay, so I'll second uh, the motion. Anything further? All those in favor, please signify by raising your right hand and oppose the same. And that was the minute show two to a one vote. Um, next on the agenda is the jail project items, preliminary lease agreement, procedural timetable, and board of commissioners resolution approving lease agreement. Matt, this is what you were referring to in your report. It is. So you'll see there are two addendums and the lease agreement and then the timetables just really for informational purposes. I did. Um, talk to Lisa about a couple things that are in this timetable that we need to discuss this just for you guys' benefit. Um, because of the way the post to mails publication schedule is, it's only Wednesday, Thursday paper. Some of the publication dates on the timetable will change and the date we needed to update the paper. Don is working just if you guys saw that, I already fixed that. Then what we actually need to do today is just to approve that resolution and that resolution basically introduces the lease agreement um, then to be adopted at the April 18th board meeting after publication. Lisa did also text me back and uh, we do not need to do appraisals because we purchased it within the last two years. The purchase price will be the value that we use for purpose of this. We don't have to do an appraisal, which is good. It's good. It saves us some money. So. <clears throat> What resolution number are we looking at? That would be 2022-04. Is the timetable just um, an FYI then at this meeting? Yeah, as far it doesn't need to be adopted. adopted. It's just so everybody's kind of got everything in front of them. It's not an actionable item. And you've looked over the resolution? I've looked over all of it, um, and um, it's consistent with how we've previously done financing. Basically, um, it's paid, and it's, it's primarily set up to be serviced with the lit tax. Um, and there is a catch-all if for some reason that can't, that there's another avenue to do it. But um, the resolution itself clearly expresses that the intent is just to use that tax to service the debt. So. Thank you. Yep. I'll make a motion that we have for resolution number 2022-04. I'll second. We have a motion and a second. Anything further? Call for the vote. All those in favor? Please signify with your right, with your right hand. And it goes the same. And that was to make it So while they're signing, then we have the lease agreement. Yeah, the lease agreement doesn't need action. That is what you will take action on at the April 18th meeting after we have a site for this meeting. 
Okay. It's just you're preliminarily approving that lease agreement. So obviously we did make sure that you have the opportunity to review it. I, will, I have reviewed it and uh, I did from a legal standpoint. But no action needed at this time, no motion. Just the resolution. Okay. I did verify that with my Okay, I have a note for Amy Biggs, but it doesn't look like Amy is here. So we'll skip that one today. Um, I do also have uh, some last minute facility requests that came in. Um, I thought I had two, maybe just one. Oh, I see it, yep. So the first one that we have is from uh, Billy Grant uh, for National Day of Prayer. And this would take place on the 5th of May uh, from 7.30, it doesn't specify 7.30 a.m. or p.m., but 7.30 to 8 p.m., so I assume just 7.30 p.m., half hour. Um, and this would be the area around the courthouse, the courthouse lawn. Normally in the morning. Yeah, normally they have both a morning event and an evening event. There's the day is stacked full of prayer events. Um, so I assume this, I assume we'll see something separate for the morning event. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, and maybe it's just a blanket request from starting at 7 at 7 30 in the morning and running all, all the way through 8 p. Maybe we can specify that. I don't know. But typically what they do is they'll meet and pray um, normally on the east side of the courthouse in the morning. And then there's an event that takes place at Community Hope Church. And then after that event, they walk over and um, pray around the courthouse for uh, local government and um, a, a list of items that they have to pray for. I have no issue with it. Uh, I'll go ahead and make a motion to approve the request as presented. Second that. Okay, I have a motion and a second. I'll call for the vote. All those in favor signify by raising your right hand. I'll oppose the same, and that was unanimous. And the second facility request is um, to use the facility for the 2022 primary and general election voting for the precincts of Columbia 2 and Union Columbia City. This would be for this building, you know, the government center. So they would need the facility to be available in the afternoon, evening of Monday, May 2nd, and uh, Monday, November 7th to set up for election days on Tuesday, May 3rd and um, Tuesday, November 8th. So it's the afternoon prior and the following day for elections. And this is always, this is always you. Yeah, so every year, yeah. Okay. And make a motion to approve the request. Second. Okay, I have a motion and a second. Anything further? I'll call for the vote. All those in favor signify by raising your right hand. Opposed the same. And this one does just call for one signature. Uh, next up is uh, payroll accounts payable. And as you recall, last uh, meeting, we were asked if we could make separate motions for payroll and accounts payable. I make a motion that we approve the payroll as presented. Second. Okay, I have a motion and a second for payroll. All those in favor signify by raising your right hand.
What did I miss there? Sorry. That's okay. Yes. And next up, we will have accounts payable. I'll make a motion to approve accounts payable. I'll second that. And uh, I, I guess I only had one question for discussion here is um, I was uh, looked at uh, um, one of the uh, line items that we had was $6,600 for um, MRT training in the jail. is, And that was from Bowen. So they charge us additional for MRT training? Uh, I believe there is a fee associated with MRT training. Huh. Has that always been that way, Sean? Okay. I think that's something we should really need to look into. Sure. Yeah. yeah. But I'd make a motion to approve. So we do have our already a motion and a second. So I'll call for the vote. All those in favor, please uh, raise your right hand and oppose the same. And that also passed unanimously. And the next item on the agenda is the uh, previous meeting minutes from May 7th, or from, I'm sorry, March 7th. Um, I actually did see something in there um, on the 2023 holiday schedule approval. It reads, Commissioner Banks presented the 2023 holiday schedules for both the 5, 1, and 4, 2 employees. Commissioner Green stated that he doesn't agree with July 3rd being a paid holiday. I think you meant to put Banks instead of me, because I did agree and then it also says he, so I don't think that was meant to be me. <laughs> so I'll make a motion that we approve it with that change, unless there are other changes that either of you two see. No, good catch. Yep, I'll second that. So I have a motion and a second. I'll call for the vote. All those in favor, please signify by raising your right hand. Opposed the same. Oh, that's right. No. Okay, is there anything uh, from the audience? Anything that anyone would like to add today to the meeting? Would anybody like to speak? Okay. Uh, Tiffany, do you have anything to add? Commissioner Schrumpf. Nothing. Commissioner Basinger. Yes. Um, so I went and I met with dispatch last Thursday, um, all the employees and Sheriff Gatton and um, Deputy Spencer was there as well. And they're confused. I walked away extremely confused. Um, so I've been talking about at least exploring the idea of combining dispatch since before I came into office. And I've tried to be very transparent about that. Um, so we spoke with the city. They said, yes, they would be willing to at least explore the idea. In my meeting with the employees, I guess I'm confused on the support that I have around that. So I know I can't make anything happen by myself. So I guess I just wanna gauge my colleagues' support on that. On on actually exploring it, not just saying we're going to and then nothing ever gets done, actually taking the steps to do that. However, if I'm the only one who would like to do that, I would like to not do anything because I know I can't make any changes on my own and they do need a piece of equipment. And I think it's unfair that I put the time in, that our employees are worried and also any time that the city might be putting into this, 
and their employees might be worried. So I guess just to have it out there, I, I guess I would just like your thoughts on exploring it or anything, any other ideas you would have with combining. Yeah, so I've, I've shared with um, Janelle and, and with Jason that I don't feel like I'm really doing my job as commissioner if I don't uh, come to the table and, and listen to uh, what's being proposed, but we had two uh, very brief, I would call them fact-finding meetings with the mayor to gauge the level of interest. And the mayor, what the mayor had proposed um, caused some concern for me that um, I just couldn't look past. And as I talked to people who've sat on these committees, I, I believe there's been at least one, if not more, and you guys in the back can, so there's been three, three committees. As I, as I hear from the people who served on those, um, it, I think it tends to always come to the, come back to the same concerns. Everything gets uh, brought up and then ultimately it dies. And so I, I think like John Barrett is probably the, the biggest um, wealth of knowledge for that. You know, he's, he really invested himself in the past, and um, even recently, he he brought up some some valid points in a council meeting um, about how he had been on that. And it just seems like every time this comes up, it's it's always the same it's always the same thing, and nothing ever happens. And so at at this time, because of those concerns, like I will of course continue the conversation and and hear both sides of it. But at at, at this point i'm i'm opposed to it i'm i'm not in favor of combining well i guess um what my thought on that was is basically we met with the, the mayor a couple of times and i'm i'm i was um in favor of looking into it because again that's the commissioner's job to look into the best way that we can operate the county and uh at what the the mayor presented to us really wasn't acceptable at all and and uh, that's our only other option so and that's where i stand on it that it really wasn't presented or acceptable what we were presented with so what he did bring to us i would not be okay with either however i think just totally stopping it there and not even trying to negotiate um i don't know if that's the right thing but if you're opposed to it right now and you're opposed to it right now then i don't see why we should continue the conversation and wasting everybody's time and energy and i i do think that there's some misinformation about being spread about the cost of a, a dispatch center uh building one out um you know and, and it, i took the time to, to hear from fulton county who just completed their jail and the reality is that it costs two hundred fifty thousand dollars to build out their new dispatch center and the the i mean i've heard in excess of a million dollars and i think that's just bad information I, I don't know where that comes from but it's not true so um i feel like that was kind of a a driver a reason for for um this whole conversation to start about combined dispatch was what is what is the best cost savings for the taxpayer but i i don't think that in the scheme of things in the new jail a, a $250,000 dispatch center is unreasonable I'm, so if it's put like that but i don't think that that shows the whole picture of it um because we do this county does have two dispatch centers so city residents are paying for a county one, and then they're also paying for a city one. So that means we've got equipment for the county and another cost at the city, as well as obviously ongoing cost and um, perf and vacations and employees and all of that. So that's kind of why I at least wanted to take a look at it was to look at the whole totality of it and the impact of it, especially with the new jail coming, I thought that now would be a good time. Um, however, if I lack support on that, then um, 
I know that the console is on its last leg and they need it a lot over at the dispatch center so they can properly do their job. I think that they should be able to get that now um, so they, they can do that. So I don't know where you guys feel on that, but. Uh, I've stated before that I'm in favor of upgrading the consoles for a few reasons. One, they'll work way better with the new handhelds. And, and two, and I'm I'm not really well versed in this, like fully understanding it, but when um, when the system went down recently, had we had those Motorola consoles, everything would have still worked. And Janelle, maybe um, maybe I could have you come forward actually. Um, if you don't mind, and just talk about the the group that can be created, the the circle or the group, and then we'll come back, Sheriff, to you. I, I'm not ignoring you. I just wanted to get through that. Can we play a little first about the last time we went down? That'd be great. Okay. Yeah, just the. I think it was actually the the day after um, the council meeting that they did not get approved. Um, these Motorola consoles are um, hardwired basically to the state. And so they don't go down. Um, the city, they're hardwired to the state. They did not go down. They did not lose the ability to communicate like we did. Um, so that's one huge thing. Um, the grouping people together, um, it's basically patching the channels together. So if we have a pursuit that goes into Allen County, we can patch Allen County Sheriff's Department, us, Fort Wayne City, whoever's involved in that pursuit, all on one channel. And so we're not, the guys aren't looking down, trying to change channels, safety issue, and we're not playing telephone. So they're telling us one thing and then we have to relay it to the next department and then they have to relay it to their guys. So nothing gets lost in translation. We're all on the same channel. And that's a capability of the, the new Motorola yes. consoles. Yes. And what about ringing busy? Well, they still, if they're, if they're on that group um, and everyone's keying their mic at the same time, will it still ring busy if we, there's more than? Yes, but we few? have priority. So if we have something that needs out now, we don't have to wait for the officers to get done talking like we do now. We can, we can cover them like we did back on the old VHS system. Right. Thank you. Appreciate that. Any other questions? Sure. Yeah. No. I guess I would just ask a request that we could come back with the information if we could the second meeting of April. That way it gives us a time frame to get everything together. See if we can get the motor rolling that would help what we need. Back to you. Yeah, and as I recall, this body um, was a two to one at the time in support of, but as we went to council, we lost our support. Council was council didn't have the buy-in at the time. Um, Mr. Wheeler was not here, and so it died because it was a three-three vote. Okay. So I mean, we're happy to revisit it in this in this body, the board of commissioners. But then I think. Also, because we can't spend those ARP dollars without them being appropriated, we also would have to go back to council. I think this time maybe with a with a stronger um, favorable or unfavorable pass, um, which we didn't do. I have nothing else. Okay, and I have nothing. So I'll adjourn the meeting. Thank you.